so hi everyone today i will be talking about how graph rag works so if you don't know what is graph rag it is basically an advancement over baseline rag uh, a technique which you used to talk to your external documents with llms like pdf or text files or youtube videos now in this advancement instead of using vector databases now knowledge graphs have been used so in my previous video i have already discussed in brief what are graph rag and its salient features and how it is different from rag in this particular post we will be jumping into the technicalities how the graph rag works and what it creates and how the retrieval happens so let's get started so basically if you are new to graph rag i would suggest you to check out my previous video so basically this is the flow uh, on which graph rag is based on the first one is creation of knowledge graphs second is community summary and third is retrieval so let's get started so the first step is to create a knowledge graph so for knowledge graph you need to have a data so the data can be a large corpus of text data set so it can be dot txt file it can be research paper it can be article it can be books etc whatever you wish to have the next step is to extract entities and relationship so basically if you know if you know the basics of graphs uh, you need to have two major uh, items for that for creating a graph database that is entity and the other is relation entity is basically the nodes and relation is basically the relationship between the nodes so in case of graph rag llms are used for entity extraction alongside if you wish to use any r tools like conditional random fields or neural networks you can use that too but in case of graph rag llms are used for entity and relationship extraction now you must be thinking how llms can be used for any r extraction by any r i mean to say that you are trying to extract named entities from the text so like for example uh, if you say uh, delhi is the capital of india so delhi and india are uh, named entities llm would be helping you to extract these entities so llms can be used for any r extraction if you don't know about it you can check out my video on auto any r using langchain uh, this is a very short tutorial which will help you understand how any r extraction can be done using llms similarly uh, not just entities you need to extract relationship also ki what is the relationship between the two entities that we have extracted so both entity and relationship extraction is done using llms or rule based systems or some other algorithm in case of graph rag it is llms now once we have got all the ingredients to build our uh, graph database we will be constructing our graph database with these three major attributes first is the node that is the entities as i told you second would be edges that represents the relationship so basically before you jump onto this tutorial i would suggest you to check out my previous video and my previous series on graph analytics so i have a better understanding of how graph works and the third would be attributes so attributes are basically the meta information about the entities like for example if you talk about uh, delhi is the capital of india if delhi is the entity in that case attribute can be the population of delhi what is the temperature of delhi etc so different uh, information about the entity so once you have extracted all these three using llms we will be creating a graph object now this can be done using neo4j uh, in my previous uh, youtube blog series on graph analytics as well as on youtube playlist you can check that out how uh, neo4j can be used for graph analytics and creating graphs using uh, text files and extractions now once you have created your graph object you need to store this graph object i think the best possible answer would be neo4j uh, so neo4j is the go to database for storing your graphs now the next step is community summaries generation so for community summary generation the first step is to detect community so if you can visualize a graph there will be certain clusters that you can figure out from this that we call as community so we need to detect those clusters so basically we would be using hierarchical community detection algorithms to identify these clusters now what how these uh, communities are getting detected what are the algorithms i have already explained these algorithms in detail in my previous blog series as well as well as on my youtube playlist so you can check that out some of the major algorithms used are lovin algorithm label propagation uh, triangle count local clustering coefficient etc so these are the algorithms that can be used for community detection once community is detected you need to 
uh, go for summary extraction. So basically, once you are able to identify three to four clusters, for example, you are able to identify there are four communities in the graph knowledge graph that has been created. The next step is to extract summary. So basically, it can be taken as a profiling the community. You are trying to extract the different attributes of the community, summarizing it. So for this, you first need to identify the central node. So the most important node of the community. Like this can be entities with highest connectivity or importance within community. So there are various different uh, criteria depending upon which you can decide the central node. So for this also, I have already covered this in my previous blog as well as in my YouTube playlist. You can check that out. There are different centrality algorithms that help you to check out which node is the most important node in the community. Uh, there can be betweenness. It can be the most popular, most connected node can be taken as the most important one. Many criteria you can follow. Now, once you have identified your central algorithm, uh, central node, aggregate relevant information and relationship associated with these central nodes and then summarize the extracted information to generate community summary using LLM. So basically extract the central node, get its attribute and relationship uh, information and then generate a summary and that would represent the summary of the entire community. Now, coming to the third and the most important step in graph rack that is retrieval so for now we have created a knowledge base that is a knowledge graph and then we have also created uh, community summaries now the third part is retrieval and this is the most important part so the first of all whatever query the user is giving using llms we need to identify which entities and which relationships are being asked in the query so basically it can again be taken as a ner extraction sort of a problem we are given the query, we are trying to extract the important entities and relationship. Now, using the uh, existing graph that we have got, we would be going for a subgraph extraction, depending upon the entities and relationship mentioned in the first query. So basically, uh, using the entities and relationship extracted, we would be identifying the subgraph, uh, which, uh, which has these entities and relationship. This subgraph will include nodes and edges directly connected to the key entities mentioned in the query. So if a entity A is mentioned, we would try to extract that subgraph which has A as uh, connected with other entities. And then we will go for context expansion. So basically expand the context by including additional nodes and edges closely related to the subgraph. So assume we got uh, entity A and B while query processing that the user is asking about entities A and B, then eventually we will be extracting the subgraph and then context expansion, we would be considering some related, some closely associated nodes and edges as well to uh, nodes A and B for a richer context of retrieval. How this can be done? This can be done in multiple ways. Either you can extract all the nodes to which the subgraph entities have a path. So for example, if uh, A, B, C, D are in the subgraph, you can take consider all the nodes and the relationships which passes through ABCD, which have uh, an edge to ABCD, or you can extract the entire community, or you can extract nodes which are at a distance less than, say, five from the subgraph nodes and many other things. I think there are many uh, algorithms around relationship and link prediction also. So even these can be used to identify which other nodes uh, would be closely associated to the nodes present in the subgraph. So relationship extraction algorithms can also be used from graph algorithms. Even this I've already explained in my previous videos, so you can check that out. Once you have extracted the subgraph alongside the associated nodes, we would be collecting relevant facts and relationship from the subgraphs using graph analytics. It's just extraction, nothing else. And then summarizing the collected information using LLMs. Response generation, I think uh, the LLM would be rephrasing the entire answer depending upon the query asked and then presenting it to the user. So I think it's quite easy to understand. The entire process is not that complicated. If you look into this diagram, knowledge graph creation where data collection, then entity recognition, graph construction and graph storage happens. The next part, we are going for community detection and summary extraction for communities. And the third one, retrieval. Uh, entities from the query are identified. Graph based retrieval happen. That is the subgraph extraction information aggregation from the subgraph that we have got and response generation. Now, before we close out, I think let's understand with an example. Assume that we are uh, handling some scientific data. 
uh, around biology. So the first step knowledge graph creation would look something like this. Process a large corpus of scientific literature extracting entities like protein, genes, diseases and relationship like interacts with causes. So this protein causes this disease, something like this. So assume this uh, our data set to be scientific. So entities and relationship would look something like this. We create a knowledge graph based on the nodes. So nodes would be represented by protein, genes and diseases while the edges would represent interactions and relationships. Now community summary generation analyze the graph using community detection algorithm to identify clusters closely related to protein, genes and diseases because these are our major entities, right? And then for each cluster, identify the central node, the key protein or the key gene depending upon which cluster you're following. Retrieval, process a query uh, and identify about which specific protein or disease the query is talking about. Extract the subgraph containing the query protein, the disease and the ent related entities and then extract the additional related entities and relationship and then aggregate everything and give the final answer. So this just short example is considering if you have a real world data around scientific literature, this can be sports also. So the entities extracted would change and the relationships would also change. Now coming back to the last section of this video, what is global and local search? So basically GraphRex provide you with two options for searching, for querying your results. One is global and other is local search. So basically in case of global search, we query the entire knowledge graph. It searches the entire graph and provides comprehensive results. Basically it can be used for uh, answering queries which are generic in nature, which doesn't, uh, which are not specific, right? So uh, for a broad understanding of any query which requires a very subjective answer or doesn't it doesn't pinpoint to a particular protein taking our previous example global search can be used uh, while local search focuses on a very specific subgraph or entity so it's limit uh, the search is smaller and the query and the answer would be highly specific now if you understand with an example explain the relationship between protein a and disease x in case of global search it will go through entire knowledge graph and find all possible connections between protein A and disease X because protein A is one entity and disease X is another entity. So the output may look something like this. Here you can see that protein A interacts with protein B which is known to influence gene Y. Now here you can see that disease X is nowhere mentioned. As protein B and gene Y has a connection with A, they are also uh, getting output in the result. Similarly, gene Y is coming with disease X also and A and X are also coming in some answer. So basically whatever connections you would be getting it, uh, the answer would be comprising all of them. Now considering the same problem, the same query, uh, explain the relationship between protein A and disease X. If you go for a local search, the answer would be very much limited to protein A and disease X and nothing extra and would be revealing just the direct interactions, no indirect interactions. Do remember this. So uh, the final output may look something like this. Protein A directly interacts with disease X. Protein A and disease X are both related to gene, uh, gene Z within a specific biological pathway. So here you can see that in the final output, um, no sentences with only protein A or just with disease X are coming. But in case of global search, we are getting certain sentences which are having just disease X or just protein A. So this is the difference. So if you want to be very specific, go with local search. Else, if you are happy with a broader answer, go with a global search. I think with this, we will be wrapping up this post. I hope you understood what uh, how a graph rack works. Thank you.